So here that could. Ooh. There we are. We're drinking a Dr. Pepper. Oh. Everybody at home, which is very unusual for me. I mean, that's the best soda, though. 100% the I, um... best. Hey, everybody, we're not recording yet, like audio wise, but <laughs> this is the free, here's... you get the free stuff. Yeah. Um, generally, I drink iced coffee in the morning. Mm -hmm. Then I, which I'm going to have to make tonight because I just ran out, I brew a pot of coffee, double strength, put it in the fridge. And I put that in my big gay pink Starbucks cup that's studded. It is a pink studded Starbucks cup that I paid $35 for, but that's neither here nor there. Then I drink water the rest of the day. But today I thought, hey, Dr. Pepper. You know what? Every once in a while, I don't do this anymore because I'm like, I, the reason I'm addicted to seltzer is because I used it to quit drinking soda. Mm -hmm. um, but my last like the thing that i used to do before the pandemic was i would go to the movies and the movies were my excuse to have like a kid size cup of dr pepper but it always made me feel sick as hell afterwards which cost 4.75 yeah exactly exactly um oh by the way while we're on here what are you doing tomorrow night do you want to go see a horror movie yes i do okay i don't well, care what movie it is I'll keep you posted. I don't even know what it's about. It's called like the night house or something like that. We'll figure it out. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. I'm going to start recording in GarageBand. Oh, me too. Let me get rid of that. There we go. Hi. Hey. Huh. Oh, yep. look at those waves. I know. It's just like the ocean. <laughs> All right. And I guess whenever you're ready, I'm ready. Hey, I'm ready whenever you are. All right. Let's do it. Three, two one welcome to the idiot's guide to horror interacting the toxic culture surrounding horror fandom and breaking down your favorite horror movies with you as always your hosts kara carol ann freeling and christopher diane freeling haberman so everybody turn off the lights grab your gas station barbecue and let's get ready to dissect the texas chainsaw massacre no, 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 no. Mm -hmm. the one from 1974 we're not going 2003 because we have self-respect in this house Sorry, Jessica Beale. That's yeah. Uh, she, she did fine, I guess. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't remember. I don't remember. Yeah. And I know what you're all thinking, guys. It's Friday the Thirteenth today. What's wrong with you? We don't look at our calendars, guys. We messed this one up, and we'll take it. So. Also, we don't like we record. We just like week by week. If there's not like mm -hmm. a major holiday coming up, we're not like thinking about it so like right. I, I like i think of this as like i'm recording on thursday the 12th i don't think of it as it's being released on friday the 13th right um so i'm sorry everyone. yeah we'll and make we, it up to you we won't make this mistake again we probably will actually probably not gonna yeah. lie probably um so this was directed by toby hooper or tobe <laughs> well who can tell i thought it was tobe but i'm an, also like an idiot I just have always just assumed that it's Toby, but Tobey. Tobey Hooper. Tobey Hooper. Um, you can watch this movie just about anywhere. It's on Shutter. It's on Tubi. It's on Amazon Prime. And maybe it's, it's pronounced Tubi Hooper. Tubi Hooper. There mm -hmm. we go. I've gotten really into Tubi, actually. I don't think I've ever used it. They have a lot of shit on there, and like, yes, you have to watch some ads here mm -hmm. and there. But, like, they have a lot of things. There's a lot of horror hanging out on there. I'll look at it. I'll look at it. Okay. I didn't know it was on Prime. Guys, sorry, I didn't post that it was on Prime on the Instagram for, like, six days in a row. Well, this is the benefits that you get for, you know, actually listening to the podcast. Yeah. That and probably other things. Us. Yeah. Probably. Yeah. Us. <laughs> Um, so the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, maybe one of the most famous horror movies of all time. Um, very tight 83 minutes. Mm -hmm. Good stuff. It doesn't get boring. Like there's nothing I would cut. No. Although if you look on IMDb, there are many people who would disagree with you. I didn't. I only checked, um, Letterboxd and our one friend, the vegan film critic didn't care for it, but um i can see why she didn't care for it actually i think that this movie as a vegan 
as the house vegan. Mm -hmm. Um, I think that this movie is, uh, for the cause personally, I think that this movie is like very much about meat and <laughs> I think a bird just flew into my window. <laughs> it was very audible. <laughs> Did you just have a hereditary moment? I have to go outside, guys. I'm sorry. I have to leave the podcast. Go outside, cut this bird's head off, glue it onto a toy. I'll be right back. <laughs> you know, you have to do what you have to do. Mm -hmm. Um, What were we saying before that bird kamikaze your window? <laughs> um, tight 83 minutes. Mm -hmm. Nobody liked it. Horrible movie. Garbage. Garbage. Garbage movie. <laughs> oh, uh, I think that it's uh, it's for the vegan cause. So, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, or the vegetarian cause. As a matter of fact, I believe that it has been explicitly stated that it was for the cause. Um, hmm. And we'll get to that when we get into the facts. I saw of. that. Yeah. I mean, um, I saw that. I mean, I, I count that. Yeah. All right. Ah! So, wow, Clarence. There's a tornado happening outside my window now. Okay. And all the Alexa's just. All the all they all the lady the Amazon lady who lives in my house just went off <laughs> with an alert, which sounds like when my doorbell rings because oh, okay. it goes through that too. So now right. he thinks there's somebody at the door. He's back. He's fine. He's back. He's yeah, sleeping. he's he's good. He's he's mm -hmm. all chill now. Um, so the back of the box description, uh, if you need it. Um, first of all, first some, some things that you know right off the bat. Let's just break down this title. Mm -hmm. We can infer that it takes place in Texas. Mm -hmm. there's going to be a chainsaw mm -hmm. and that there is going to be a massacre. And I do believe that all three of those things come to be in this movie. Yeah, kind of. Um, the Texas Chainsaw, it's like a very good title. Um, you know, the, but... the title was banned in France, I think, and it had to be called the Texas Massacre. The word chainsaw was cut out of the title. Even just like the, I get that, I guess, kind of, even though France, like, I didn't know that they had rules. Um, <laughs> I think that I could be mistaken, probably think... am mistaken, but I know it was cut out of somewhere. I picked France at random. The title itself just kind of inspires fear, right? Mm -hmm. Like, um, I don't know. It just sounds scary. The Texas Chainsaw Massacre. It sounds like mm -hmm. it's going to be absolutely disgusting. And I thought it was my entire life until I actually watched it when I was like, you know, a teenager and mm -hmm. went, where's, where's the blood? Because there is none. Hardly any. Hardly any. Um, so let's give you a little back of the box description. Um, I'll try and set the scene. Uh, there weren't video stores in 1973, so we're just going to go back to our time. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. when there were video stores because i'm feeling nostalgic today so you're a teenager you're looking for something that will either a get you laid or b <laughs> make you the coolest kid at the sleepover mm -hmm. or c something that you'll just watch alone because nobody else likes to watch movies with you which was this this girl mm -hmm. this girl right here um so you're strolling through the horror section and you come upon a box it's got a guy looks kind of looks kind of big he's wielding a chainsaw and it says the texas chainsaw massacre and you go well i think i can infer what this movie is about mm -hmm. but um i will uh, uh oh i i will read the back of the box anyway my power might go out hmm. just a little it's it's flickering. It's threatening right now. Um, but anyway, so the back of the box description. So you pick it up and it reads when Sally Marilyn Burns hears that her grandfather's grave may have been vandalized. She and her paraplegic brother, Franklin, Paul A. Partain, set out with their friends to investigate. After a detour to their family's old farmhouse, they discover a group of crazed, murderous outcasts living next door. As the group is attacked by one of the chainsaw by is, a, is attacked one by one by the chainsaw wielding Leatherface, 
Gunnar Hansen, who wears a mask of human skin, the survivors must do everything they can to escape. Yeah, I'd, I'd rent that. Yeah, I would totally rent that. Um, also, that's like the entire... That's just the movie. That is the entire plot of the movie. I think that this is going to be the shortest walkthrough in Idiot's Guide to Horror History. Mm -hmm. This movie is so linear. It's just got a smooth, linear structure. Hardly any jumps. I mean, a couple, but like hardly any. A little bit. It just all happens mm -hmm. within like a certain time frame. And it follows like it just goes in chronological order. We don't have to jump around or anything. So, spoiler warning, we are going to talk about this movie in depth, up to and including the ending. So, if you haven't seen this movie, please, pause this episode and watch it. Yeah, if you don't think you can handle it, guess what? You can. I mean, like, if you're, if you don't think you can handle it because you can't handle gore, yeah, then yeah, you there is can. None. If you don't think that you can handle it because you don't know if you can handle just being fucking exhausted from just sheer visceral terror, then maybe, you know, skip out. I because believe in you. It's, I do too. But even me rewatching this like a few days ago, I was like, man, I'm tired. Mm -hmm. It's exhausting. There's so much screaming. It doesn't stop. Like once the movie starts, it just keeps going until mm -hmm. it's done. Yeah, and it's horrifying. Like, the camera angles and everything. We'll get to that, I guess. We'll, mm -hmm. get, to, we'll, yeah. we'll get there. We'll get there. Um, but for now, uh, do you want to do some movie facts? Wish me luck. Hey, <laughs> movie fact number one. According to John LaRoquette, who was a Roquette, um, <laughs> his basement... Nope. <laughs> his he payment... was a Roquette in his basement. He was a basement rock cat. He never saw the light of day ever, but mm -hmm. that's neither here nor there. Um, according to John LaRoquette, his payment for doing the narration at the beginning of the movie was a joint. One marijuana cigarette. But, like, also, um, I did not know that John LaRoquette was the, was the narration at the beginning. This was my big moment of realizing that John LaRoquette did this narration. I don't think I know who that is. Um, I'm trying to think of what he would be in that uh, you would have seen. Hold on. I'll just look up a picture and put it up to the screen. Um, he was in Night Court and Stripes. Uh, I guess he's been in The Good Fight. That's John Larroquette. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I didn't know that it was him, but apparently yeah. he got paid one one joint to do it, mm -hmm. which I guess is fair for like you know, twenty five seconds of narration. Mm hmm. That's fine. I do it for free right now. Yeah, for real. Do they want me to re-record it? Probably not, but I'll do it. Yeah. Uh, during the chase scene towards the end, Marilyn Burns actually got cut up pretty badly from the branches, so a lot of the blood on her body was real. Mm -hmm. That feels like an occupational hazard. I know that we bring up staph infections a lot on this podcast, but staph infections. <laughs> the more you know. Yeah. They exist. Well, it was the 70s, you know. They didn't have that back then. Staph infections. Right. right. No, they didn't exist. People just died sometimes. Yeah. Maybe from a chainsaw. Who knows? Yeah. You want to do C? Oh, yeah. C. Toby, Tooby, Tobe Hooper. Wanted the film to get a PG rating, so he intentionally made it with as little blood and mild language as possible, but then his plan backfired. It was so terrifying that the MPAA gave it original cut an X rating. Uh, they finally gave it an R, so he gave up and released it. He's all about PG movies because Poltergeist. What was Poltergeist rated? PG. See, but Guys. Poltergeist. Poltergeist is so scary, but like it's not like like towards the end of this movie when it's just like 
she, screaming. Yeah, when she's like, yeah, I I know, I know that we're not into the walkthrough yet, but like when she's like tied up and gagged and like he's just like in her face with a blade and stuff, and I'm like, mm-hmm. Toby Hooper really wanted kids to see this. <laughs> he was like, for kids, like yeah, for children. Um, so even in his lift boots, Gunnar Hansen could run faster than Marilyn Burns, so he had to do random things to slow himself down. You can see him at one point just slicing up branches, just arbitrarily slicing up branches. Hey, you gotta do what you gotta do sometimes. But like what that implies to me, if he was slicing up branches, what that implies to me is that that chainsaw was, um, active. Yeah. What if he had tripped? This was the 70s. This is the 70s. Apparently Guys, this was the, the 70s. 70s. We didn't have to worry about chainsaw safety. Uh-uh. You could just chase your actresses with actual chainsaws. Mm-hmm. While they get staph infections from the trees. Right. Yeah. Totally fine. You want to do the next one? I do. And I also have to correct it. So I'm sorry in advance. The film is loosely based on the crimes of serial killer Ed Gein who was not a serial killer because he only killed two people. He only killed two people, but then he robbed a bunch of graves and made like lampshades and nipple belts, nipple belts and curtain pools and stuff Mm -hmm. like that. Um, But he's considered a serial killer. He's which I don't understand. It's because of the heinousness of the, of how they found his house. Like, I think that that is, like, entirely it. Like, they just, they found a bunch of nasty shit in his house, and so he's just on on par. I also don't like his leather hat that I always see the picture of him in. I mean, like, not not a looker, Ed Gein. Mm-mm, mm-mm. Not, not a good-looking guy. He should have done the face thing that Leatherface does. Yeah, for sure. Maybe he yeah. did. We don't know. Maybe he did. Maybe yeah. he did before he started, you know, like taking the lips to make lamp pools and stuff. Um. Anyway, don't look up Ed Gein, kids. Oh, yeah. You don't need to know. Yeah. Um. So only one person is actually killed by a chainsaw in this movie. Hence my hesitation at the beginning. Uh, why I don't understand why it's called the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. I guess it's just because Leatherface is wielding a chainsaw most of the time. And there is a massacre. It's just not all done by chainsaw. Mostly by hammer, if you think about it. Mostly by hammer, meat hook. Mm-hmm. Um, yep. Yeah. Ham- hammer and meat hook. Hammer and meat hook. That's it. They should have called... Let's go back in time, and we can recall this movie. The Texas Hammer and Meat Hook Massacre. <laughs> the Texas Hammer Meat Hook Chainsaw Massacre. Uh-huh. That would be yeah. the most accurate title. I'm trying but to think how... Could- yeah. But then you just could, like, pick one. <laughs> I would pick Meat Hook. The Texas Meat Hook Massacre. That is, that is pretty, that's, I don't, I think that's pretty scary, too. You mm-hmm. know what title for a movie is never not funny to me? What? Midnight Meat Train. Is that a real movie? Oh, that's a real movie, and it's not a porn. I was, that's my second question. <laughs> It is not a porn. It is both a movie from, I think, the 70s, and then they remade it with Bradley Cooper in the early 2000s. Um, hmm. But yeah, legitimately, the title is Midnight Meat Train. And it, it has, is not a porn. It has nothing to do with penises. Disappointing. Hey, also, <laughs> speaking of disappointing penises, um, I was Googling <laughs> I was Googling this movie before we started recording. There's a 2021 version coming out. Of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre? Yeah. Did you see that? No. Me neither. Why? Is it, a, is it like a... I thought we were done with that era. Apparently. Just... It's, I mean, we're, we're, we're getting a Candyman pretty soon. Okay. The film was revealed to be titled Texas Chainsaw Massacre and was confirmed to have an R rating. The film will star Elsie Fisher. How do I know that name? Who's mm. Elsie Fisher? I think she was Elsa in Frozen. No, she was the lead in eighth grade, the uh, the Bo Burnham movie. I don't um, think I saw that. It's very good. And I didn't like Bo Burnham until I saw that movie. And I was like, shucks, I wish his comedy was like this. And now his mm-hmm. comedy is like that. Maybe I'll give him a chance. No. Um, 
so the posters for this uh, genuinely look pretty promising. Um, but we'll see. Yeah. Uh, it looks we'll like see. it's in post production, so yeah, we'll see. Hmm. We'll watch it. Anyway, do you want to do you want to tell them all about what uh, Guillermo del Toro did? Hey, did you guys know that Guillermo del Toro, who did that movie that I liked, Pan's Labyrinth? Pan's Labyrinth, yeah, um, became a vegetarian after seeing this movie. Ta-da! Yeah, we tied it all back together for the cause. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think I read on the Wikipedia that also Tubi Hooper said that um, he like had intended for it to be like this is a movie about meat and how disgusting meat is and like you know this is yeah so just saying it's for the cause sorry everyone um so director table hooper claims <laughs> to have gotten the idea for the film while standing in the hardware section of a crowded store while christmas shopping while thinking of a way to get through the crowd, he spotted the chainsaws. Not normal. Not normal. No. Not normal. I think of, uh, when I'm in like a crowded store, I think of screaming. Or mm -hmm. just, get me out of here. Get me out of here. Yeah, every time I'm in a Trader Joe's, I have a fantasy about just like abandoning my shopping cart and just walking out. Mm hmm Because it's terrifying. But um, I never think like, I'm going to kill everyone to get out of here. I mean, maybe to get to, like, the front of the line, but, like, not to get out. No, I could just leave. Right. Right. That's uh, that's how I feel. I can just go. Yeah. Um, I don't need to murder anyone with a chainsaw. Not today. Not yeah. today. Um, although, like, people are getting increasingly rude now that you can just have as many people in the store as you want. Um, I have noticed this. Uh, maybe it's just me like projecting because um, because I don't like being in the store with a bunch of people and I kind of mm -hmm. miss when we uh, had like less capacity because I felt so free. Mm -hmm. um, but now when you go to the grocery store, there's like a million people in there and they're all bumping into your carts and being super aggressive again. Now, could you do what I do? And like I started doing this during the pandemic but i will never stop and that is ordering all of my groceries online and then going to target to get them i've thought about that um i get a lot of stuff from trader joe's mm -hmm. and trader joe's does not do that okay what about aldi's because aldi's does uh, i know that aldi does but like trader joe's so i'm a lazy person mm -hmm. i don't always like to cook and this is just mm -hmm. going to sound like an advertisement for Trader Joe's. Welcome to groceries. Uh, is it the tamales? It's, it's the tamales are great. They don't have vegan tamales though, mm. um, but they have like a bunch of like pre-made salads, and like they also have this amazing these amazing little vegan mandarin orange chicken bites. What is going on? There's a literal tornado outside my window. Mine too. Yeah. Right. Helen Hunt is on her way. Yeah, so we've got a we've got a tornado, a Pennsylvania tornado massacre happening. Mm -hmm. Um but anyway, that's that's my story about why I go to the grocery store that I do. Severe Trader Joe's thunderstorm if... warning for Pittsburgh. <sighs> All of Pittsburgh? All of Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh's a really big place. It is very big. Well, it's not that big, but it's pretty big. It's pretty big. Um, well, I guess we should talk about the movie. Okay. Let's do a walkthrough. Picture it. August 18th, 1973. Um, we get a text scroll with the narration that costs one marijuana cigarette. Mm hmm I don't remember anything that he said, but Neither I think it's I. the plot of the movie. Essentially, yes. He just says, like, on August blah, 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 1970, blah, blah, blah. Like, three 
children were <laughs> not children young people were mm. traveling to a cemetery and you know they were like there was a tragedy or something i don't know i don't remember i didn't write it down it also calls this a true story which, which is we not. know is a lie but then again like everybody does that right because like the blair witch project did that mm -hmm. um what and i else fell is... for it the strangers has said that it's a true story and i fell for it i fell for it hard with the strangers the i was strangers like this is, is fat. terrifying it is so scary live tyler like smoking cigarettes makes stresses me out more than anything else in the world it does it's very stressful um but like so scary mm -hmm. so scary it could, it could happen yeah even like i i don't think i could watch the strangers like if i were to be home alone is tamra home don't even um when i went to see the strangers we'll just do this and then and then we'll get back to the movie i'm sorry i have a really mm -hmm, funny mm -hmm. story to tell about the strangers i don't know if i've already told this on the podcast before do you know my my story about going to see the strangers in the theater no but i'm also very forgetful um <laughs> Well, I'm sorry if you've heard the podcast before and it, like you've heard this on the podcast before. I don't remember whether or not I've said it. Um, but when I went to go see The Strangers, I went on opening night. I was 17 years old. Mm -hmm. um, it was packed and I went with two friends and we had to sit like in separate seats from each other because there were no seats together left. And so I was just sitting there all nervous. And then there's the first big jump scare when Liv Tyler like opens the curtains and the burlap mask guy is like standing there pounding on the window. Mm -hmm. Um, heard a really deep voice go, fuck this shit. And turned my head to the left, saw a giant man bounding down the stairs and out of the theater. He did not return. Mm -hmm. That is how scary The Strangers is. Can I tell you a scary story that happened to me in real life? Yes. Okay. Picture it. It is the summer or COVID. Something was happening where I was not at work for a while. Mm -hmm. Why would I not be at work in the summer? It was probably during a pandemic. The one we're currently in, yes. but the beginning of it. Mm -hmm. I was off for a while because, you know, we all were. Most of us were. I can't say we all were. I was off for a while, at least. I was in my living room in my old apartment which was very small and it connected to another apartment like directly um i'm watching the lighthouse because you know it is two three four o'clock in the morning and i'm watching this pitch black all the curtains drawn and i'm probably mostly naked i get a knock on my front door two three four o'clock in the morning me watching a scary movie. I don't have any friends, especially none that would just show up at my house ever. You know, I crack open the door because I think it's my friend Bobby because she's the only person that would ever just show up. And it's a woman that I don't know. And she just walks straight into my apartment. Why? And I said, she thought she was, she thought I was my neighbor and she was there to have sex with me. So was said, she was she a lady of the night? I think she was just like a uh, whatever you people do for grinder hookup. Whatever you people, <laughs> whatever the straights do. Yeah. <laughs> well, she was well. a straight version of a grinder hookup, but not for me because I said hi. I said hey, um, <laughs> <laughs> you got to get out. So for those of you who aren't watching the video of this uh, this recording, uh, Chris was just giving the wrist. Yeah. Yes, bitch. You know the wrist. <laughs> well, anyway, there's a narration. <laughs> <laughs> At the beginning of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, there's a narration. Just basically outlines the movie. It's John Larroquette. I didn't know that. You're going to know that at the same time I do, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, and then we get like these like recordings of like radio shows and stuff like that that sound very authentic about like grave robbing. Um, and then th we're just like slowly zooming out of like these corpses that have been like vandalized, um, which look very real. 
and very look gross. very real. They're yeah. super gooey. They're wet, dripping corpses. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't know if they're. Dri- I wrote down wet, dripping, but who knows if they were actually dripping? They looked like they were just gooey. Like they mm-hmm. were just gooey. Do you remember the mummy? Yes. The mummy, like whenever he was gooey. That's what he. Right. That's what the corpses looked like. Gooey mummies, except right. mostly skinless. And then we meet our people. And a dead armadillo. Didn't need to be there. No. Didn't need to be there. Um, we've got some young people in a van. Mm-hmm. We don't really know how old they are. I'm guessing they're supposed to be like late teens, early 20s. Late, yeah. Yeah. Um, so there's Sally, her paraplegic brother, Franklin, and then their friends, Kirk, Pam, and Jerry, who is driving the car. And Mm -hmm. they have this cool-ass van. I want the van. It's a nice van. I'm not going to lie. I want that van. Um, So they are concerned because I guess that their grandfather is in the cemetery where those gooey corpses were. They heard about the grave robbings and the vandalisms. They want to go make sure that their grandfather's grave is in good shape, that he's not a gooey corpse that you know it, on display that mm-hmm. he's still a gooey corpse in his coffin <laughs> however i'm not like whatever they want to do is fine but please make me a gooey corpse on display you want to be a gooey corpse on display yeah like put do me out for need, halloween do we need to be the executor of like each other's wills because like i kind of also want to be a gooey corpse yeah on display. please like if i die please make me a gooey corpse on display and let me frighten the children. Yeah. Or whomever. Absolutely. Take my skeleton, put it in one of those labs, let bugs mm-hmm. eat it down to the bones, take mm-hmm. the bones, put them up on your front porch, act like it's one of those $400 whatever's from Home Depot. But mm-hmm. actually, it's my bones. I'm haunting the neighborhood. That's what and I And they want. were free. So you saved $400, guys. And whatever it cost for the bugs to get a free meal. You're feeding right. bugs. It's environmentally friendly, and I get oh. my wishes met. You missed it. I got into a fight at work. Why? Because there was a giant millipede, like the big ones from the ring, you know, no. from the video. Mm-mm. Yep. Mm-hmm. And everyone was trying to kill it. I don't like bugs. I don't but we're not going to step yeah. on one. No. Just leave it alone. Let it live. It did. <laughs> because I threatened to, like, fight people over killing this big, gross bug. Yeah, last night one actually was like running across my kitchen floor and I didn't realize it. Mm-hmm. But my cat, who is essentially a dog and is, I I wish you could, let me see if I can get. <laughs> <laughs> um, he was like running towards me and I mm-hmm. didn't like understand because he never comes in the kitchen really. And then I saw that there was like a millipede and he was saving me from the millipede and it ran Aww. under, yeah, it ran under the stove and he like stood guard by the stove while I was cooking. So, oh, it knows. Yeah. Good cat. Yeah. Um, so afterwards they decide, after they check on the grave, grave's okay. Mm-hmm. Everything's cool. fine. Yeah. They decide to go to Sally and Franklin's old family house. And yeah. yeah, which is barely talked about. They're just like, hey, let's just do this. Um, Why not? We're already here. This movie doesn't really have a lot of expository dialogue, which is surprising considering mm-hmm. like, I don't know how sim- it's but just we really simple. Learn actually. a lot about malefic planets in retrograde. That's true. Um, there is a lot of astrology for all you astrology fans out there. Mm -hmm. Um, and almost everything that she says comes true. It does. I wrote down the horoscope she reads for Franklin, but that's not for a while. Yeah. Um, well, they're just, they're in the, they're in the van. They're on their way to the homestead and they see a hitchhiker and they're all enthusiastic about picking up the hitchhiker because it's hot as hell outside. Um, I guess. I don't. I care. wouldn't have done it. No. He's no. covered in blood. Like his mouth is covered in blood. Yeah. Also, just like as a rule, as a woman, I'm not gonna pick up a dude, ever. Right. Ever. Um. 
So they pick him up. He gets in the back of the van and he's like all like twitchy and like mm-hmm. doing like a lot of like talks like this. Like, They're also pretty mean to him. They are kind of mean to him, but he's giving off some pretty creepy vibes, man. Yeah. I mean, Jer- Jerry says, looks like we picked up Dracula, but he does look like a Dracula. Yeah. His hair's all greasy. Mm-hmm. He's like thin and pasty. Um, he has dead picture- pictures of dead cows in his purse. Yeah. And he's just showing them to them like it's normal. And he's like, I killed that cow. Yeah. Yeah. It's weird. It's weird. Mm-hmm. Um, but he is particularly taking a liking to Franklin and keeps talking to Franklin. Um, and he's talking about um, the old slaughterhouse that his family worked at that has since gone under. Um, he takes a Polaroid picture of Franklin and then he says, you can pay me for it now. When Two dollars. Yeah. Which I Googled how much two dollars it costs in 1973 versus today. It's twelve dollars in today's money. That is uh, that's a little bit too much. Too much. It's like Kennywood prices for a picture. Right. Um, so they're like, no, that's ridiculous. Why would we pay you for this Polaroid? Mm-hmm. Um, and he gets mad, takes out a weird foil packet, sprinkles some gunpowder on it, burns the photo, and then cuts his... He takes out a straight razor and is just like laughing and playing with the straight razor. And then in the goriest moment of the movie, I think it's the goriest moment of the movie, Mm -hmm. he cuts his hand, his palm open. And then they're like, what are you doing, man? Like, don't do that. That's bizarre. Stop. Um, He then slashes Franklin with the straight razor. And so they kick him out. Finally. Yeah. Yeah. And he's, like, running alongside the van, which is moving very slowly and, like, kicking it and going, like, Mm -hmm. sticking his tongue out and going, like, um, which is normal. And they're all just like, oh, my God, what the hell was that? What the hell that was is that you picked up a hitchhiker. Yeah, there's movies about this. I guess not yet. This is the movie about this now. Mm -hmm. This is the movie that inspires the movies about the hitchhikers. Mm -hmm. Um. It does look like a straight up tornado outside, doesn't it? Can you hear the rain behind me? Um, I can hear the rain behind me. <laughs> hey guys, what you're hearing now is authentic rain. Yes. So picture that while you're watching this movie because this movie's hot. Like it's like 98 degrees the entire time. Yeah. Ooh, 98 it, degrees. There we go. Yeah. Yeah. There mm-hmm. you go. Yeah. Um, but back in the van, Franklin gets his horoscope read by who? I don't remember. I don't remember. Pam. Sally, Pam. no, Pam. Pam. Yeah, she's um, got like a giant book of astrology. A big one. Like mm-hmm. one you get from college if you were to take a class on astrology. And Franklin's horoscope says, travel in the country, long range plans and upsetting persons around you could make this a disturbing and an unpredictable day. The events in the world are not doing much to cheer one up. Not wrong. Yeah, none of it's wrong. Not wrong. Um... So eventually they uh, decide to stop at a gas station to get gas. Mm -hmm. And when they get there, the guy at the gas station says that the pumps are empty. So they can't get any gas. It's the 70s, man. I guess anything's possible. Yeah, pumps are empty. Um, So they keep going and they want to return to the gas station once it has gotten more gas. Um, and they're just like, it's fine. We'll just go to the homestead. Then we'll turn back around. Mm-hmm. So they arrive. The and... clerk tells them not to go. Yeah. He says, the girls don't want to go. Why don't you just stay here? Have some gas station barbecue. And um, stay away from that old house. Um, so off the top of your head, list at least three reasons why you would not like to have gas station barbecue go. Um, I don't think they had a refrigerator there because they didn't have a cell. They didn't have a telephone there at all. Um, I'm sure that they just cooked it in a pot and left it there all day. Those people have never washed their hands one time. That's yeah. Um, I was going to say off the top of my head, salmonella, 
E. coli, uh, listeria. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so they finally get to the, the homestead. And Franklin tells Kirk and Pam about a local swimming hole. And they go off to try and find the swimming hole. Mm-hmm. And they find the swimming hole all dried up and they hear a generator. So they find this generator just like running. Um, which watching that, I was curious because I hadn't seen it. I haven't seen this for a long time. And I was curious as to whether or not this inspired um, the generators in uh, what's that video game called? Dead by Daylight? I don't think I've ever played it. Um, I just watched people play it a bunch. Uh, mm -hmm. But one of the, like, you have to, like, restore the power in all of these generators. And, you know, meanwhile, you're being chased by a killer. Um, mm. And one of the killers that you can choose to be is Leatherface. Huh. Yeah. So. Here's anyway. what I learned about this. Um, generators are really loud. Super freaking loud, man. Yeah. yeah. Um, power might go out. Um, <laughs> yeah, mine too. Um, but they're looking for the generator house because they noticed the generators from the swimming hole they couldn't find, or maybe they did find it. And Kirk wants to go get gas for the van, so he's going to go trade his guitar for gas. And right. Pam thinks that nobody wants to trade a guitar for gasoline. Probably right. I mean, probably right, yeah. Uh-huh. Right. Um, so... She's waiting on swing mm -hmm. in the yard. Kirk doesn't hear anything from inside the house. So he just goes inside. I'm not saying he deserved it, but don't go inside somebody's house. This is like very common in horror movies. Um, it's So let me just make this abundantly clear just in case anybody is getting the wrong idea from all of these movies. Mm -hmm. It's not okay to just enter someone's house Unless your life is in immediate danger. Right. Do not just walk into someone's home expecting a service like mm -hmm. to use their phone or to ask for gas. Um, don't just walk into someone's home. Right. I mean, Kirk stood out there and knocked for a long time and nobody answered. So right. what he should have done, I'm not trying to victim blame anybody here, but what he should have done is left yes or waited right no instead of just like walking in and being like i really need gas mm -hmm. so i'm going to continue on my merry way onto somebody's private property right so he goes in and you know it's all sort of decrepit looking but there's a room straight across from the door in the back that is like red and has like what looks like little animal bones hanging on the wall? Mm -hmm. Same. Yes, I know. Like, if you can... Man. Is it hailing? Because I'll yeah. just leave. It's... <laughs> it's so... Oh, my God. Okay, so what you're seeing on your screens, if you are watching this on video, is not doing this justice. Um, it is... I might have to turn my lights out so you can see it. Terrifying out there. Um... <laughs> yeah that's <laughs> this is the thumbnail hold on let me take a screenshot of this <laughs> oh i can't turn my light out I'm all connected that's good um so this feels really authentic we're like recording this in a thunderstorm the power might mm -hmm. go out there's lightning there's a serial killer right outside my door maybe I mean, I'm not going to lie to you, Chris. Maybe, you know? Yeah. There's no way to know. Yeah. There's just, yeah. Um, so anyway, uh, from that room emerges our dear, <laughs> we'll call him the main character, Leatherface. Mm -hmm. um, and he's big hulking guy in like, a, he looks surprisingly presentable outfit wise. He's wearing like a leather apron, maybe. Yes, but like he's also wearing just like a button down shirt tucked into some pants. Did you know that he had to wear that one shirt for four straight weeks? I read that. That's so disgusting. Yeah. They didn't let him wash it. 
They couldn't afford a second shirt. And that shirt was dyed to look like that, so he could not wash it. He had to wear it for four weeks in the could, Texas summer sun. Can you imagine what that smelled like? I don't want to. No. I don't want to. Uh, but he gets he gets hit in the head with a hammer, right? Yeah, he gets hit right in the head with a hammer. Because uh, Leatherface is making pig sounds, like squeals or cries or whatever pigs do. And um, Kirk just heads right into this person's house that he does not know, walks straight to the pig room or whatever, and then gets immediately hit in the head with a ha- with a mallet or a hammer. Mm-hmm. Like a mur- it's like cow murderer. That's the, the, the weapon they're using. I can't even, at some points, I can't even tell whether the thunder is coming from your side of town or mine. Who can tell? It feels like it's like slowly, it's starting with you. So it must be like starting over there and then heading this way. It's going straight north. Yeah. Um, so yeah, uh, Pam is starting to worry about Kirk because it's been a while since he's, you know, he went in the house. So she goes ahead and just walks into the house. And she trips into a room, and it's filled with furniture made from human bones. Mm -hmm. And also, there's just feathers all over the ground. And a a real-life chicken. A real-life chicken in a cage. I feel like that couch would be so uncomfortable to sit on. Yeah, who would would need that? Guys, I'm being literally haunted right now. Yeah. Yeah, I can hear it. Sorry, guys. What fun for you. We should just start, like, we should stop talking about Texas Chainsaw Massacre and just start telling ghost stories. <gasps> just turn out our lights and... Yeah. Do you hear about the guy with a hook for a hand? Do you uh, see that we're making that, too? Yes, it's going to be a series. Oh, is it? Mm-hmm. Is it going to like, like, scream s- the series? Yeah, stop taking, like, good horror movies from the 90s and making them into weird series. Because they turned Scream, which is a slasher, into whatever that series was. I didn't even try watching it. I'm not going to lie to you. There's like next to no sense. deaths. So you can't be a slasher if nobody's dying. You know what's like, a good slasher series? A slasher. I'm excited. I am going to start that. Um, I started, Get the second season. I started watching American Horror Stories. How was that? I liked Coven. Um, I liked Apocalypse and Coven. <laughs> So this is the new, like, episodic anthology that they're doing I haven't now. gotten there yet. Um, so the first two episodes of it were one story that take place in the murder house. I don't mm-hmm. know if all of the mini stories are going to, like, take place in the universe, like, of the series. Um, mm-hmm. But I hope not. Because we already right. had the exact same plot line, like, Murder House was like the Murder House episodes were ex- essentially the exact same plot as Murder House, but they made it gay. Mm-hmm. So that's that's it. I don't know. I just wish Ryan Murphy would try harder to impress me personally. Um, I know, but everything he does is like very impressive already. You think? Well. Everything he does becomes like a, a hit right away. I guess, but like, I I guess there's no accounting for taste. I don't know. I tried. No, I've the... not seen much of his things. I tried to watch the first couple episodes of Ratchet. And, I watched uh... the first couple episodes, but okay. then I stopped. Yeah, there was nothing keeping me there, and that's always what happens with like American Horror. So oh, you are gone. Uh oh. I think Chris's power has gone out. Okay. Let's see. Yep, Chris's power went out, so I'm going to stop recording. There we go. 
All right. I'm recording. Same. Okay. So, three, two, one. Welcome back to Idiot's Guide to Horror. Um, as I stated previously, our dear mm. Chris uh, lost power, and therefore we lost him momentarily. Um, for those of you who are watching the video, you saw uh, where his face paused in a semi-demonic fashion. <laughs> um, <laughs> I can't wait. Yeah. Uh, and uh, yeah, so we're back. Um, yeah. We were talking about... Ryan Murphy. We were talking and... about Ryan Murphy and Texas Chainsaw Massacre. <laughs> who knows which one was last? Not I me. I think Ryan Murphy. I think we were talking about Ryan Murphy last, but we don't have to keep talking about Ryan Murphy. We could talk about Texas Chainsaw Let's Massacre. Let's talk about the movie in case my power goes out again. Right. So <laughs> Pam goes into the house. It's got, you know, there's all that bone furniture that wouldn't and be good for And she's crawling around on the floor. Yeah. <laughs> Are you making a pun? <laughs> Who, me? This couch, first of all, this couch that um little leatherface has is made out of a human skeleton it looks like it would be the most uncomfortable couch to sit on you would get stabbed mm -hmm. by bones yeah yeah i'm not going and to then repeat she my falls joke. on the floor and starts coughing open mouth coughing with these feathers all over the floor right not nothing seems like sanitary right yeah it's just all gross um so she goes back into the hallway and she sees Leatherface. He emerges from that same like red room again. Mm -hmm. And then she goes to run out the door and she gets out the door, but Leatherface grabs her from behind. Big old bear hug drags her back in the house. Um, so he takes her into a room, lifts her. There's a meat hook. Guess Throws what he does. Yeah. Do you want to take a wild guess? Stab in the dark. Um, he impales her on the meat hook. And but she's... we don't see any gore. No, just like some blood splattered on the back wall. And just I would her... have I would have enjoyed seeing the meat hook come out of the front of her. Yeah. Um, and then we just uh, hear her screaming while mm -hmm. he revs up his chainsaw for the first time. And he butchers kirk which we don't see anything mm -mm. we just see him taking the chainsaw to the body and her screaming she is forced to watch as her boyfriend is you know cut up cut to pieces um, like that song by papa roach yeah yeah cut cut Kirk's my kirk life. in two pieces yeah <laughs> so Jerry, back at the van, Jerry and Pam and Franklin are all just hanging out. It's getting dark outside. Um, mm -hmm. And Jerry's like, you know, like, they're probably, you know, whatever. And he's going to go look for them. And she's like, you can't just leave us here. And he's like, I'll be right back. So he goes. And he finds the, uh, he finds Kirk and Pam's blanket outside mm -hmm. the house so he assumes that he was correct that they were doing adult stuff and playing yahtzee yes playing yahtzee um go fish mm -hmm. braiding, cheesy. braiding each other's hair mm -hmm. talking about taxes oh god yeah um so he find he goes into the house uh, he's not exactly phased for some reason and just keeps barreling on through until he mm -hmm. gets to a room with a freezer. Mm -hmm. He opens it up. You want to guess who's in there? It's Pam. It's Pam, guys. Yeah. Pam's in the freezer. Her eyes are wide open. Um, we think that she's dead, but she's not dead. She's alive. And she like no. jumps up. And he, like, doesn't get to do anything because Leatherface comes out of nowhere, hammers him. 
Yeah, stop. Hammer time. Oh. Because he gets hammered right in the back of the head. <laughs> the Texas Hammer Massacre. Yeah. And then he stops. Doesn't have Pam. the same ring to it. He 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 shoves Pam back into the freezer. Yeah, maybe she's dead now. She's probably dead by now. I mean, we Pretty never forty years really of her in that freezer. We never really see her die. So... No, but I'm assuming they ate her. Probably, maybe, um, yeah. Uh, maybe we find out in the second movie. I don't remember. Probably not. I can't remember. Yeah. Um, the second one's super weird. That's the one with the the radio DJ, right? Maybe I'll watch it tonight. Who knows? Who knows? Feeling fried? I probably won't. No, I'm watching some weird Netflix show. What's that? Where, well, I just finished. I'm watching every competition show that is not American right now. Okay. Um, something about interior designers that are British. Oh, hell yeah. British competition mm -hmm. shows are the best because they're so fucking nice to each other. So nice. It's so relaxing. Mm hmm I love, I love Great British Bake Off. Love yeah, it. Yeah, and the guy from What's-His-Face is in it. Oh, and, and Great British, British Bake Off? Mighty yeah. Boosh? Mighty Boosh. Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. Noel Fielding. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Um. Which I just watched the whole first season of The Mighty Boosh last week because I was so bored. What's it on? Hulu. Perfect. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Uh, one thing that I, you know, a thing that I did in a past life was that I was a professional baker and uh, baked goods decorator. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, Great British Bake Off is like immersion therapy for me. Um, mm -hmm. Because... In, when you're a professional baker, you do not get to spend four hours on one baked good making it perfect. Mm -hmm. That's just something that you do in your spare time for funsies. Um, mm -hmm. So, yeah. If anybody wants me to make them some baked goods, because uh, I don't really eat sweets that much anymore, but I fucking love baking, please. I'll, do I'll donate some baked goods to you. Just uh, Just hit me up. Yeah. Don't ask me for anything because I can't do a thing. <laughs> I'll teach you. You're yeah, teaching me how to time. bleach my hair. So. Yeah. Um, yeah. Anyway. If you ever need tips on how to bleach your hair, don't ask me because I don't want to help you. <laughs> he does. It's special for me. Yeah. It's special for if me. If you want me to do it, I'll do it. I got quoted an asinine price <laughs> to get my hair done. <laughs> So, That's a lot. Yeah. Like, later tell me what salon it was. I will. I will. We're not going to say it live on air. Um, mm -mm. So, anyway. Mm. Um, so, Sally and Franklin back at the van, they get into a little argument because Sally wants to go looking for everyone and Franklin uh, wants to go with her. And she's like, no, I can't, like, push you down that hill because Franklin's in a wheelchair. She's like, I can't push you down that hill and then push you back up. And so she takes off and he just goes after her. He goes with her. Mm -hmm. And they get to the house and they call out. And Leatherface comes out of nowhere and just kills Franklin with a chainsaw. So Yeah, he's the only one in this movie to die of a chainsaw. Yeah. So And then there was Sally. Mm -hmm. Um, so Sally, there's like a super like long chase scene of her like screaming and like running and Leatherface chasing after her. And this is the scene where if you like really watch, you can see him truly dawdling. <laughs> then a little soft shoe, you know, some tap dance. <laughs> um, so she runs into the house. And then she finds the remains of a, uh, of a couple. Mm -hmm. Um. And... But they appear to be very, very deceased. Yes, like long time deceased. Mm -hmm. Um. So Leatherface gains on her, and she jumps through a second floor window. Good for her, by the way. I know. She just runs and crashes through that motherfucker. No hesitation whatsoever. Nope. She just, like, balls up and she's like, bye, and, like, mm -hmm. just psh, right through. Um, now, here's my only problem with Sally. 
Um, I understand that she's very frightened. She's being chased by a man wearing another man's face or yeah. another person's face. I don't know who whose face it is. Um, but she's being chased by somebody wielding a giant loud weapon. Right. And she is screaming. Like the last hour of this 80 minute movie is her screaming. That is not the best way to hide. Right. Yeah. It's also not an exaggeration. Chris is not exaggerating. The last like 40 minutes of this is just Marilyn Burns. I feel like it's over half of the movie. Yeah. Is her screaming. Yeah. Um, so she jumps out of the window and then she like gets to that gas station. Mm hmm. Which like, why go there? I don't. Well, it's the only landmark she knows. She's not from around here. Right. But Leatherface chases her the whole way. And she barely and then backs makes it off. In, yeah, she barely makes it into the gas station. She like pounds on the door, finally gets let in, and she, you know she's like, he's like, there's no one out there now, and he's trying to calm her down. And then he says that he's gonna go get the truck so that they can go get the police. Mm-hmm. And she looks and she's like just staring at this barbecued meat, and she's kind of slowly putting together that that meat is people. Mm-hmm. And then the truck pulls up, and he comes out with a rope, and she's like, "No, no, no!" And he's like, "Mm-hmm." She grabs a knife, yeah. and he beats it out of her hand with a broom handle. Yeah. And then beats her with a broom handle. Yeah. Very... And then ties her up. <laughs> the Texas broom handle massacre. It could have been Texas broom handle massacre. Mm-hmm. Um. So. He, like, ties her up. He gets her into the truck. And he drives to the house. And he Beating gets Beating her there. the entire time with that broom handle. Yeah. <laughs> he gets there at the same time as the creepy-ass hitchhiker from the beginning of the movie. Mm-hmm. And we find out that that hitchhiker is, in fact, the brother of one Mr. Leatherface. Mm-hmm. And, also, and- the son of... One Mr. Gas Station Clerk. Yes. And so they bring Sally inside and they bound and gag her. With a dirty um, rag. With a dirty rag. And they put her at the head of the dinner table. And Leatherface is, um, he's, he's in drag beautiful now. now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. He's beautiful. Um, Leatherface has watched some tutorials. He, uh, mm-hmm. he did like a nice little cut crease, mm-hmm. put on some, a, a nice lip stain. He's wearing some rouge maybe. Yes. Yes, indeed. Um, porcelain skin, mm-hmm. porcelain mm-hmm. skin. Um, so they go, Leatherface bring a, a man in a wheelchair. Uh, grandpa. 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 Uh, he comes from downstairs to enjoy the the meal as well. And... I still thought he was dead at this point. Yeah. Until they cut open Sally's fingers and put them in Grandpa's mouth and he starts suckling the blood. This is the moment. This is the moment every time where I'm like Toby Hooper really thought for kids. <laughs> oh, for kids. For kids. Um He wasn't dead at all. No. He was not dead. He looks it. Definitely looks it. Um he looks like I don't know if anybody watches I think you should leave, but there is a sketch in the new I think you should leave where uh he puts on like a mask and this is that's just that's what grandpa looks like anyway you know it took five hours to put grandpa in old man makeup and then and he so... decided he would never do it again so they had to so shoot had to... all of their scenes mm-hmm. yeah yeah the 70s man the <laughs> 70s um so she starts screaming and crying and then they start mocking her and there's no and music or anything. Her. It's like so creepy. 
it's so upsetting and she starts crying and she says please i'll do whatever you want sort of like implying that she would do sexual things in order to get out of the situation and they're just laughing at her and mocking her and mm -hmm. so them torturing her upsets dear old dad and he's like you know this just needs to be quick and easy there's you know i won't have any part of this and he's like yelling at them and then the boys come up with the idea that grandpa should be the one to kill her because grandpa was the best killer in the slaughterhouse mm -hmm. um so okay i know maybe i'm fucked up but this is funny this is comical this it's is comical so f i know it's not supposed to be but crying laughing watching this this time they mm -hmm. keep trying to put this hammer in grandpa's hands and it just keeps slipping out and like a few times it hits like this metal tub that they have sally bent over funny funny as hell over and over again over and over again for like three straight minutes while dad's like don't worry you're not gonna feel a thing dad was the best he once did 60 in a minute yeah but he can't grip the hammer. He's literally just dropping it over and over again. It hits her in the head one time. Right. Um, enough to like make her bleed a little bit, but not mm -hmm. enough to kill her for sure. Um, so. Somehow. They're, yeah, they're all getting frustrated because Grandpa can't, you know, hold on to the hammer long enough to kill her. Mm -hmm. And since they're all upset, she breaks free. And then once again, runs through a window. Yeah, right no hesitation. She's like, I did this once before. No, I can do it again. Especially on the ground floor. Which, like, honestly, like, if I were to do that, I would just, like, put it as a skill on my resume from that that point on out. Like, yeah. I, I have break now... through windows now. Yeah, more than once. Yeah. Like, this is, this is a special skill that I have acquired. I run through windows. Mm-hmm. However... <laughs> Um, she's running down the driveway. We hear a chainsaw. We see the hitchhiker is following her. Um, they're both chasing after her. However, another however, um, there's a big truck, like a big Mack truck, like a big, you know what a Mack truck is. I'm not going to explain it to you. Um, <laughs> it is coming down the road that Sally, the hitchhiker and Leatherface are running down. And unfortunately for the hitchhiker, it runs over his entire body. Yeah. And I think it kills him. Yeah. Um, I do believe that there is no way that one could survive being run over by a semi mm -hmm. with all of its wheels. Correct. Yeah. Yeah, it starts with the first wheel, and then there's like four wheels after that, and it just boom, 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 boom over his entire body. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that happens. Um, the driver stops to help, and Leatherface is like doing little zigzag patterns on the door mm -hmm. because he's an little artist. Figure eights. Yeah. yeah, he's a sensitive artist, guys. Mm -hmm. Then the driver hits him in the face with a wrench. And that Leatherface falls down, accidentally cuts his own leg with the chainsaw. And he's like, he didn't like that. He's like, this, this sucks. Mm -hmm. This is terrible. And the driver runs away. And then another truck, like just a pickup truck, comes down the road. And Sally climbs into the back. And Leatherface, she gets away. She gets away. She gets away. And she's just laughing hysterically. Maniacally, yeah. And Leatherface, meanwhile, is dancing with the chainsaw. Dancing. I know, I know it's supposed to be him, like being like, "Ah, oh, fuck!" Like I messed up. Oh, it but, looks like, like he's doing a slow waltz with that it's chainsaw. At sun, like at at sunrise. Right. A beautiful dance with a chainsaw mm -hmm. at sunrise. You can like hear classical music, but you can't mm -hmm. really. Just picture right. it in your head, and he's just waltzing with the chainsaw, very gracefully, just... Very light on his toes. Da, da. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Um, so that's the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, guys. Yeah, it was very short. I told you it was going to be our shortest walkthrough ever. 80 minutes. I mean, this not. This has been an hour minutes. An hour minutes. An hour minutes. Um, and who knows? Because I lost power for like at least 30 of those seconds. Well, I am at an hour seven. What are you at? An hour eight. There we go. Mm -hmm. So. Okay. Uh, that's, yeah, that's the end. That's the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. That's the whole movie. Um, so here on Idiot's Guide to Horror, we like to not only just make you base your opinion off of the dumb shit we say, um, yeah. we also take dumb shit other people say from the internet and we make it your your information your problem it's your problem now uh we call it movie reviews sometimes other people's shit mm -hmm. um maybe we should just call it everyone's a critic oh i love that there we go everyone's a critic um so mine this week comes from uh imdb i did not get this person's name um since this movie is a classic, I thought it would be funny to find somebody who thought it sucked butts. Mm -hmm. And so I did find somebody. Um, the title of this review is DO NOT SEE IT, in all capital letters, um, with an exclamation point. It was one star out of ten. And they said... Out of ten. Out of ten. If you want to see a horror movie with your friends, this movie is the most baddest horror movie in this life and don't see it with your friends. Now, this person, he should have been at a PG movie. <laughs> if you want to see a horror movie with your friends, this movie is the most baddest horror movie in this life, and don't see it with your friends. I don't know. I've seen some pretty bad movies. I just love the way that it's worded. It's like poetry. Mm -hmm. It's like a song. Like, if you want to see a horror movie with your friends. Don't see it from the baddest movie in your life. <laughs> Anyway, what was yours? Who who did you? I pulled uh, from Letterboxd. I also went through all the bad ones, but there was nothing good enough. Because hmm. they were all like, if this wasn't a classic, I wouldn't give it any stars. Buddy, don't give it a star because it's a classic. Give it stars because it literally deserves it, but whatever. Right. I pulled a review from Letterboxd from somebody named Ethan Colburn, who gave it four stars. And they say, you may see it as a story of teenagers being dismembered by a chainsaw killer. But I see it as a like-minded family trying to give their ailing grandfather one last shot to do the thing he loves best. It's so funny. I know. <laughs> oh, that's fantastic. That is, that's beautiful. Mm -hmm. That's beautiful. It is about familial love. Yeah. You know, they do, the, the Leatherface clan, they love each other. Um, so... Failed the Bechdel test, failed the DuVernay test. Neither one of them. Like, there's nothing. There's nothing there for either one of them. Um, the only thing that it passes for the Bechdel test is that uh, there are two women that both have names. And the only mm -hmm. thing it passes for the DuVernay test is that the trucker at the end is black, but he does not have any lines, I don't think. I don't think so. No. Um, so Idiot's Guide to Gore, where we rate the amount of gore that you are seeing on a scale from one to five, um, one out of five. Yeah. It's the least gory slasher I've ever seen. You see nothing. Mm -hmm. It's like a lot is left to your imagination, which is like even worse, um, in some ways, I guess. I, but I... Yeah, nothing. No gore. And that's why I think that's why, like, the remake annoys me. Um, it's because the remake, like, made it all gory and weird. And also, like, it changed the hitchhiker thing at the beginning to, like, that weird thing where the girl shoots herself in the head in the, in the car. You want to see a good remake? You watch the Evil Dead remake. I know That's we talk about remake. it a lot, but it is a really good remake, guys. We're talking about it a lot because we want you to be happy. Terrifying. It's so good. Uh-huh. It's disgusting, though. It's disgusting. It's like a 10 out of 5 on the gross yeah. scale. It's so gross. It's not for the faint of heart. 
No. I think I have it on DVD. So if you want to come over and watch it, anybody, you just let me know. I also have by, it on DVD. I think. I mean, I know I have it on DVD. Yeah, I also have it on DVD, but I still watched it on the internet the other month. I was going to say oh. the other day, but it was like a month ago. I can't do that to myself. Last time I watched it, I did a movie a day review thing for 2017, I think. And that was the last time I watched it because it's still really gross. Yeah, it's disgusting. Mm -hmm. um, but it's fantastic. Mm -hmm. It's really good. And Jane Levy uh, is the scream queen that we deserve. Um, mm -hmm. All right. So every week on Idiot's Guide to Horror, we like to imagine that we have been given the rights to remake the movie that we are speaking of, even though now this one is going to have been remade twice. Um, yeah. But we like to imagine that we've been given the rights to remake the movie. And then we decide what we would keep and what we would throw the hell out. Um, so, Chris, starting for you, uh, starting with you, what was flawless? I really like how they lied about it being based on a true story. That makes me happy. That drove people to see this movie because they're like, oh, God, it's a true story. Like I did with Paranormal Activity, which I believe was true for like 34 years, you know? Right. But whatever. Right. Um, it really, <laughs> it hits differently when it's a true story. Um, I also, this, I like the script. It is a very concise movie. There's no second guessing. You're in, you're out. It's almost an hour long. Like it's a little over an hour long, like under 90 minutes. You can, it's like a snack of a movie. It is, it is like a snack, but it's nutritious. Like we're being fed. Mm -hmm. um, it's a very healthy snack. I agree. Like kale chips. Yeah. I yeah. haven't had kale chips for a while. I wonder no. if I would still like that. I th I like them. I don't, I don't like kale. The Brad's ones with like the fake cheese on them? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Fuck yeah. So good. Um. So for me, um, the way that this movie is shot is inspirational. Um, as far as like the influence that it's had on horror as a genre in general, like holy shit, um, the scene towards the end, the dinner scene, when they're like doing like the like close ups on Marilyn Burns' face and like her eyeball, the eyeball. And you can see how terrified she is, and it's so claustrophobic the entire time. Like it's like the camera angles. Are, once we get into the house are so tight and just mm -hmm. kept like very locked in on like what exactly they want us to see and while at the same time like Hooper is leaving so much to the imagination absolutely amazing flawless flawless and also this movie is just terrifying there's just something yeah. that is just very gritty and raw and scary about this movie. Um, so that's for me, what I would keep. Oh, it's freaking out. Um, it's gonna be okay, buddy. Yeah. Uh, so if you were to change something about the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, what would it be? Now, mine is maybe dumb, maybe not. I would have less dead animals, more chainsaws, but I know that would affect the movie. I would also add more chainsaws since this is technically the Texas Hammer Massacre. Mm -hmm. um, the we... Texas Grandpa Massacre. Oh, that's good. Thank you. That's very good, yes. Um, I also think that I would change up the, uh, the makeup for Grandpa a little bit. It was very bad. Maybe. It's very bad. Um, it doesn't even look like an old person. No. It just it looks, looks like, like a mannequin. The House of Wax remake. Yeah. yeah it looks like a mannequin. Um, but those are my only complaints. Um, really. Uh, I guess we didn't really need a dead armadillo at the beginning. Yeah. Um, but, like, there's nothing, like, egregious about this movie at all. There's, like, 
no sexualization of women like when they're being murdered or when they're being chased they're not like making like weird orgasmic moaning noises like they are Mm -hmm. screaming they're fighting for their lives and then Um, dying yeah and then dying except for Sally, sally who just i can't emphasize this enough busts through a window twice Mm-hmm. Not one time, but she two just times. Jumps right out that window. Yeah. Yeah. Just like puts herself into a ball mm-hmm. and like just kamikazes through the window. It's yeah. honestly inspirational. Um, so yeah, I would remove the armadillo. I would make grandpa's makeup so he actually looked like a real elderly person. Right. Um but that's about it for me. What do you rate it? Now, I know it's a classic and I should rate it higher. However, I give this a four out of five hammers to the head. What's keeping you from the one star? It leaves too much to the imagination for me. Really? You want it to be like more gory? I want more gore. And I almost never say that. That's This feels weird. We're in like, we've swapped mm-hmm. places. This movie is the acting is pretty good franklin is not the oh my god do you guys hear that at home we're both dead now this is a ghost podcast full of ghosts (laughs) i think i just peed (laughs) i think i just heard your thunder from my house just now where my house the sun is shining again so give it a minute i am so surprised my power isn't out right now don't jinx it okay um yeah, there's not enough gore for me. I don't need to see all the kills, but whenever Leatherface was going at Kirk with the chainsaw, there was nothing happening at all. I could not tell if he was, like, fucking with that corpse or what, because nothing, there was no blood splatter, nothing. Maybe he already drained it. Maybe. Um, so, for me... This is a five out of five. And you know I don't give those out. I don't give those out willingly or easily at all. Mm -hmm. Um, I would definitely give the Texas Chainsaw Massacre a full five out of five. I think it is a brilliant exercise in terror. I think that um, the fact that it shows so much restraint and still manages to be so visceral and so gruesome and so bleak um, is a testament to its effectiveness even Mm -hmm. like today this movie is from 1973 it is currently 2021 and still watching this i was i felt like i had run a marathon and it's only like 83 minutes long Mm -hmm. because it's just that like it does so much it like grates on you so much and takes so much out of you I also, I think that it's brilliant, and I forgot to say this in the What is Flawless, right up to, like, the last 30 seconds, we have no idea if Sally's going to make it or not. Mm -hmm. They really make it seem like she's not going to get away. And then when she does, it's that much more satisfying that she gets away, the credits roll, that's it. We don't have to deal with some, like, weird, like, aftermath where we have to see her, like at college and somebody being like come on sally and her like rubbing the like scar on her head or whatever and being like oh i don't know if i'm ready to be social after i witnessed this texas chainsaw massacre (laughs) (laughs) um it's just satisfying but your internet didn't go out not yet um just my big computer. Just my big computer. Mm. Um, it flickered just enough. So, um, that Coming was back. My... Yeah. <laughs> Lorraine's coming back here now. Yeah, it's like a straight up tornado outside right now. And there is somebody just hanging out on the front porch across the street. Oh, I think they're watching me. <laughs> Um, Tamra home. <laughs> don't, don't. I'm home alone. Don't do that. To oh me. dang. Yes. Um. 
So since I'm pretty sure that my power is going to go out any minute because mm -hmm. this rain isn't letting up, I guess that we should make this our shortest episode since, like, the first episode. Um, We're still at an hour and a half. It's fine. That's I've lost my script, uh, so I'm just going to see hey, if I can do this. Guys, do you want yeah. me to do it? Yeah, go for it. Hey, you have email questions? Nope. That's not how you say it. You have questions? <laughs> you have comments? You have recommendations? You can email us at idiotsguidetohorror at gmail.com. You can also follow us on Instagram at idiotsguidetohorror, which we update six days a week, unless I'm feeling very lazy. And we'll do it five days a week. You still get the weekdays. Um, you can follow us on Twitter, but I wouldn't recommend it at Horror Idiots. I have not posted for a month, maybe a month and a half. Hey, we're also on Facebook. It's facebook.com slash horror idiots. Also, if you would like to, we would love you forever. If you would rate our podcast on iTunes or Apple Podcasts or whichever one of those, they're the exact same thing. Also, it helps other horror movie fans find our podcast. Also, please tell a friend, tell them how cute we are and how adorable we are we're and so how cute. much we record even when the power goes out. It's true. We fight through everything for you. Mm -hmm. um, remember when we had a fever? Yeah. Remember when we had a fever? Not very many of you remember when we had a fever because apparently <laughs> not as many of you wanted to hear an episode about Sleepaway Camp 2 as we thought. We're never listening to you ever again. <laughs> um. So, also, we got a YouTube channel. And, Good luck uh, finding it, guys. It's hidden. Secrets. It's hidden, it's hidden right now. Um, but I think maybe we should have a discussion about when we're going to open that up. So, And what it's going to take for you to get that open. Um, mm -hmm. So, keep You can also follow us on Instagram. Yeah, you can follow. I guess you can follow us on Instagram. My Instagram is at GroovyFancyPants. It's a... Uh, it's a reference to Ash Williams. Mine's at Chris W. Haberman, which is uh, my my reference to my name. It's a reference to uh, the name that you were born with. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I. Yeah, you could follow me on Instagram. Um, I don't know how interesting I am. I'm going to the beach and I bought the sluttiest swimsuit you've ever seen. So Ooh. if you want to see that, stay tuned if I, I can do. wear it in public. We all Wish do. Me. Chris. It's so Chris. short. Do it. Do I'm going to do it. Okay, how short? Is it sleepaway camp short? Um, It is longer than a Speedo, but only if you count, like, the shortest, shortest boxer breeze you've ever seen as a swimsuit. I do. There, It is basically a Speedo. I think I speak for all of us when we all say we do. Well, stay tuned because I'll be posting those pictures next week. That's fantastic. I do post thirst traps sometimes, but they're mm -hmm. they're mainly for me. Okay, we should wrap this Well, up. guys, <laughs> with that power flicker, we got to go. All right, guys. Until next time, um, good night. Goodbye. And, and never waste your pain. Never waste your pain. I love you. Mm. <laughs> A good going into Bye. Bye.